Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a build of Windows Longhorn I've actually never heard of. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Windows Longhorn build 4033. Build 4033 is a Milestone 6 build, and this is one of the last builds that was leaked before the reset. In this video, we're going to be going over the installation of Longhorn Build 4033, what changed from Windows XP, what changed from the final version, which was Windows Vista, and talk about the reset a little bit. The first thing we need to do before we install the operating system is enter the BIOS. Because this is a beta build of Windows, there is, of course, a time bomb. For Windows Longhorn, the date we need to enter is July 23rd, 2003. This is the day that this build was compiled, and for that reason, it will successfully boot up by passing the time bomb. We can go ahead and exit the BIOS, making sure our changes are saved, and we will now boot into what is called the Windows XP pre-installation environment. As we saw there, it was called the XP pre-installation environment. Throughout this operating system, we'll see things referred to as Windows XP as well as Windows Longhorn. The name Windows Vista wasn't even thought about at this point, and overall, the code names were just a little bit confusing. As we can see, the startup screen here is more of a combination of XP and Vista. We can see that it does have the old XP logo with Longhorn, Microsoft, that kind of thing, the logo at the top. But it also has the same loading bar with different colors, but albeit the same loading bar that Windows Vista had. Here we can see a Windows setup like we've never seen before. This setup was never actually released to the public, and it was only seen in Longhorn beta builds and I would really have liked this to come to the public. If we look at what Windows XP's setup looked like, it was that white text and blue background, and it was text-based, and then we look at what Windows Vista had, which is not too different from what we have now, I prefer this over both of them. So we can see that we have this nice blue gradient thing background, as well as welcome to Windows setup. We can go ahead and click continue. Once we've entered our product key, we can go ahead and click OK. Now we can review our 180 day license, which we're already definitely past that. So you don't actually have to read this. If you really want to, you can, but it's an EULA, no one does. Now we get to select where we want to install Windows. This looks totally different from anything we've ever seen. So let's just click on disk zero. What's interesting is if you click on unallocated space, you'll get an error saying that setup requires a minimum of a three gigabyte free drive when this is a 40 gigabyte drive. So we have to click on disk zero, and then click continue. Now we can type our name for our computer, so for our name, let's just use Longhorn. Once we've clicked continue, we're now copying information and files needed for setup. This is a very easy process, and from here you can go ahead and sit back until we boot in the out-of-box experience. Here we are inside of the Windows XP, also known as Windows Longhorn desktop. Right now it looks a little bit crowded, but we'll be able to change the screen resolution in a minute. So we can just go ahead and quit out of the new hardware wizard, Apparently, there is no out-of-box experience. It already created an account named administrator for us, so we're good on that end. Now, I don't have VMware tools installed, as VMware tools don't install on beta builds of Windows. However, I have set our screen resolution to 1080p, and we can automatically see how laggy the system is. This is not a screen recording thing, as I'm recording on a capture card. So just natively 1080p, and the specs of this machine are not bad, it's just that this lags with that big of a screen resolution. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to 720p and hope that we have better results. 720p left us some better results, so we're gonna have to stick to this for the rest of the video. So we can see that this desktop looks nothing like the Windows XP, or for that matter, Vista Final Builds desktop. We can see that our taskbar is blue and there is no green start button like we know. This has totally been changed. The background, which is nicknamed Bliss inside of the Properties menu, is not Bliss. It's a Longhorn M6 build. That's what it is. Going in the desktop, we can see that this is called Bliss, but it definitely doesn't look like the Bliss we know. But the newest thing is the sidebar. This sidebar was obviously still in beta at this point, and it wasn't transparent, and I really wish it was. This blue as a sidebar, a solid blue, looks unbelievably terrible. On this bar, we can also unlock it, and I believe that means we can, yep, we can stretch the bar. So this is basically a secondary task bar, is what I would call this. I mean, it acts like one. We can stretch it, we can do all those things with it. So I would call this like a task bar. We can add a basket, the classic tray, the clock, messenger, people, quick launch, search, slideshow, sync, user, and Windows Media Player. Personally, I would have this minimized all the time, as it looks like a big nuisance, but I mean, I definitely, it's okay, it's not horrible. Something you may have noticed throughout the entire beginning of this video is the notifications. 
previously these used to pop up above the tray but now they just kind of float and in my opinion these look better than the windows vista notification they pop up with no menus but when we hover over it we now have options such as don't show again and create an exception as well as the x in my opinion longhorn defined the notification before the notification actually came out in windows 8. now we can take a look at another major thing that's changed the start menu. As we can see, in the final build, as we all know, blue changed to the arrow that we know. And in my opinion, this start menu is definitely not it. It's blue, it's not rounded, it's squared off, it has a kind of horrible shadow behind it. Um, but on this side of the start menu, we do have more things, such as my contacts, game library, and music library, and some new icons that we actually never saw in final builds of Windows. Taking a look in properties, we can see that this is Microsoft May Long Hom Lay Professional Pay, version V2003. I definitely don't think that this is corrupt at all. Taking a look at all programs, we can see that things actually aren't that much different from Windows XP. A lot of these are still the same, such as in games, we've got all the same games, including the Internet Reversi, Spades, and Hearts, which eventually got removed earlier this year. There is no ink ball, no purple place, none of the games that shipped inside of Windows Vista. Taking a look inside of my computer, we can see this is probably the biggest change. The top of the window is extremely large, and we've got even an even larger portion right here with, with various actions such as burn, add, or search. Down here under hard disk drives, we can see that we have our Windows disk, and it only tells you the percent of how full it is. It says 10%. It doesn't say, okay, well here's your total drive space, and this is how much you have free. It only shows free. We can see the beginnings of a sort of arrow theme here with the hovers on the apps. I wouldn't say they're arrow, but they look more modern than the standard blue that you would see on Windows XP. So this was kind of foreshadowing the arrow effect. One thing that I really want to take a look at is control panel. Again, control panel does have that really big forehead, the fonts seem off a lot, and switching to classic view is pretty standard. I wouldn't say that you're going to try to see anything else. Something that I also noticed is down here in the taskbar. The apps are centered. So let's go ahead and open my computer, for example. Everything is opening in the center and going out. They don't start over by the start button. My idea is they wanted to create more of a seamless taskbar because there's no dedicated start button. It just blends in. And so they just wanted to have things kind of bridge out. Obviously, this was never seen as today's taskbars still go from left to right. Going to shut down the operating system, we can see that this looks exactly like Windows XP. Nothing has changed here. And so with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos and device restorations. If you could use a build of Windows Longhorn for a day, what build would it be? Definitely let me know in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.